food. This was about all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Luke 24, 49, he had told them, you just stay in the city of Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. And so what are they doing? Verse 8, Act 1, verse 8, he says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the end of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them and they will receive power. Power for what? Power to be brought to the knowledge of all truth. And how will they know it's the Spirit? Because it will be a miraculous. There today who claim, people who claim that to get exactly today what they got back in Acts chapter 1 and 2, when the Holy Spirit came with power. But what you see today is wholly different from what happened back then. Today you'll have people whipping up emotions and getting people excited and saying, the Holy Spirit's coming. Everybody get ready. This is the Holy Spirit. And it's nothing more than emotions being raised to fever pitch. It can be done with music. It can be done with a charismatic speaker, charisma, getting the people stirred up. This happens a lot. It's been happening. Well, they say the 20th century religiously was the big movement of the Pentecostal movement. Uh, they say that the charismatic movement, this is when people were going by their feelings and not so much the scriptures, but their feelings came became paramount. The higher the feeling, the more spiritual they felt. That's not what we have here in Acts chapter 2. This is actually real. What we have in Acts chapter 2 is something you'll never see today. There appeared, it was visually, over their heads, cloven tongues of fire. That's what it looked like. In any Pentecostal service today, you won't see that. You may hear a lot of things that mimic what they think was happening here. You won't see the tongues of fire. And it says a rush, well, let's just read it together. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, on the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together with one accord in one place, and suddenly they can a sound, not from the street, not from the audience, but a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. If I'm in a Pentecostal service and I hear a sound from heaven, and it fills the whole house where we're sitting, then I might believe them, but you don't hear that today. It's manufactured. Verse 3, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And notice this, And began to speak with other tongues, that is, languages, other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. I have an English tongue, Southern English, American English. But there are more Japanese tongues, Chinese tongues. These are languages. And there were people from gathered from all over the known world in Jerusalem for the day of Pentecost. And they had different dialects, different languages. In fact, he goes into detail about all the people gathered there in their different um, places. But the, each man heard them speak in their own language in which they were born. And you can read the details of that in Acts chapter 2. But the point we're making is in verse 4. They, the apostles, were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, verse 14 says, Peter, standing up with the eleven, that's the apostles, raised his voice and said to them. So he's speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit. They had done just what Jesus said. Wait in the city of Jerusalem till you receive power from on high. About ten days later, they received his power from on high. It came from heaven. It had the sound of a rushing mighty wind. They could see the visual effects over their heads as they were speaking in languages they had not studied. And all of the audience from around the world gathered in Jerusalem was hearing the gospel spoken. God was communicating his words through inspired men, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now that's what we have in Acts chapter Two. The Holy Spirit came with power. Now, the result of all of this was verse 36. 
it says that Peter said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ, Son of God. You have killed the Messiah. And they interrupted his sermon. It says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They were asking the apostles for inspired, God-authorized information about what to do. They knew they were guilty. What do we do? And Peter told them, he said in verse 38, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you that receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so that's what they did. Verse 41, those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So what we have here is not just an ordinary event, but a, a supernatural event. It's miraculous power. And we see this continuing through the book of Acts. Chapter 3, Peter heals a lame man. You'll have modern day so-called miracle workers. They can't do that. They can't heal a lame person or the authority of Jesus Christ. Verse 6, he made that lame man walk. In chapter 4, they continue their miracle power. Verse 31 of chapter 4 says, When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now, this building starts shaking. You have something that's a lot different from just excited emotions. Emotions <clears throat> lift up into a frenzy. That's what a modern is about. But that is a far departure from what really happened back here. When the Holy Spirit did come, and shook the house where they were assembled. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what happens when people are filled with the Holy Spirit? They spoke the Word of God. It's communication. It's nothing mysterious or fantastic. What it is, is this is how God was speaking the word. Now watch this. At first. This is how God spoke to the church in its infancy. When it was just through inspired men. God could have spoken directly out of heaven like he did in Matthew 17. But he didn't do that. He sent the Holy Spirit just as Jesus said he would. And the Holy Spirit taught the things of Jesus, spoke the word of God with boldness. That's what the apostles did, is they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. What was the result? Verse 32. Now the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul. And verse 33 says, And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Christ, saying, Wait a minute now. Jesus is different because when they put him to death, he overcame the grave. Well, anybody could say that. Anybody could make up a story about a great man who, though he was killed, he came back from the tomb. He came out of his grave. Now, why would people believe something like that? Well, it was the great power that the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the dead. They had to do miracles to raise a lame man and make him walk. And communicated with authority. Okay? Let's go further. The apostles not only had this authority, they could give it to others. Look at chapter 5, how they were using their miracle power. In Acts chapter 5, verse 12, Through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were with all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So God was working with the Holy Spirit through the apostles with signs and wonders. What is a sign? It points to the authority behind it. What's a stop sign? The stop sign says the city has made an ordinance that this is where you stop. You better stop or we'll write you a ticket. We have authority to tell you to stop. We've got we to make traffic flow. So a sign points to the authority. Signs and wonders were done. What's the wonder? Well, that's the effect on the people. When the people see a miracle, it's not going to leave them guessing. Did I just see a magic trick? Did I just see sleight of hand? Was I tricked? No, with a wonder. It pointed as a sign directly to God. When Jesus could take the severed ear off of Malchus and just put it right back in place, 
That was not a magic trick. Miracles. We find the apostles could give this power to others. In chapter 8 of Acts, we find a magician who was listened to because he could trick people. He could make them think that what they were seeing was real. This is Simon. We call him the sorcerer or the magician. It's claiming that Simon was some great man. Verse 9. In Acts 8 verse 10 it says, To whom they all gave heed, they listened to Simon. And he was just a magician. From the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And he wasn't. Just a magician. Verse 11, and they heeded him because he had astonished them with the sorceries for a long time. But here's the difference between Simon and the apostles. Simon was using trickery, but, uh, sorcery, magic trick, sleight of hand, and the, tricking the people to listen to him. But the, the apostles were actually doing miracles. And so people will sometimes be deceived into following somebody they think is telling them the truth. But there was a way to distinguish between trickery and the truth. And Simon, well, we, we find that the people, verse 12, when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. So they believed the gospel of Christ. They were baptized. Then it says, verse 13, that Simon himself also believed when he was baptized. He continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. So here's a magician tricking everybody. He hears the gospel. He obeys it. He's baptized because he knows he's been deceiving people. But he's amazed at seeing the real thing. He sees not a trick, but Simon the magician is seeing the real miracle. And it says in verse 14 that when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard the apostles with them, and when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them, they had only been baptized in the name of Jesus. Then they laid their hand, then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. So the apostles could transmit the Holy Spirit power to others. <coughs> And even Simon saw this, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through the laying on the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. He thought, I won't have to do magic tricks anymore. Now that I'm a Christian, I can buy this miracle power. And if I get this, then I can really make some coin. I can, I can really bank on this. And his heart was not right. He was told to repent and pray that perhaps the thought of his heart might be forgiven him. And verse 22, because he was, though a Christian, he was letting covetousness get the better of him. But the point from all of this is the Holy Spirit was given to the apostles when they received in Acts chapter 2 in full measure, and they could transmit this power to other people. But here's the problem with transmitting the power of the Holy Spirit. When all the apostles died, they could lay their hands on no more people. And so that, that, that was the only way the Holy Spirit could be transmitted to others, was through the laying on the apostles' hands. That's a very important point. People today that claim they have this same power to do miracles have got to get